So I woke up this morning and I thought to myself, damn, today is dialysis day. <laughs> but then I realized, your girl ain't got no more dialysis. Hey, I ain't got no more dialysis. Hey, it is such a blessing, guys, to say that. I mean, going from Monday, Wednesday, Friday on dialysis to having no dialysis, I am so happy as you can see. So a lot of people are still on dialysis or are going to be on dialysis. So trust me, my prayers are with each and every one of you. Being an ex-dialysis patient, yes, I can say that now, I'm gonna actually be talking to you guys about some ways to improve your dialysis sessions today. I've been on dialysis so I can speak from experience of the things that I had to do. So, if you guys know someone that could benefit from these types of videos, please go ahead and share it with them. And if you're new to my channel, what's up? Take a moment and subscribe. And don't forget to hit that notification bell as well. And if you've done that, welcome to the family. All right guys, let's go ahead and get started. that I can give you is to know and understand your dry weight. A person with healthy kidneys can urinate up to seven times a day, but a patient on dialysis can urinate little to none. And that's because their kidneys are no longer properly removing the waste and extra fluid from their body. I remember the days when I had little to no urination and the fluid used to build up in my body and cause me to swell. Some of my older videos, you guys can see that my face was really round, um, my legs were swollen at some times, and those were the reasons because of that. And that is why I used to go to dialysis so they could remove those fluids. And I used to always deal with the shortness of breath. It looks like a lot of the fluid was around my lungs and so it used to cause problems. Many nights I had to sleep sitting up and there were days where I couldn't even walk from my bed to the bathroom without having assistance because it was so much fluid. So once I went on dialysis, I had a choice of which direction I wanted to go to. Now I decided to do hemodialysis. I wanted to go to a center which was separate from my home because I didn't want my husband and my kids to you know, watch me connected to a PD every night. It just wasn't something that I was comfortable with. So I chose the hemodialysis. And with the hemodialysis, it filters your blood to remove excess fluid from your body. And when it does that, it gets you down to your correct dry weight. So for those of you that are new or just not too sure what your dry weight is, it is your weight without excess fluid built up, you know, from your treatments. So if my treatment was Monday, Wednesday, Friday, in between those days, I'm not urinating properly, the fluid will build up. But once I do dialysis, it gets me right back to where my dry weight, where my doctor thought was reasonable. So technically, it's the lowest weight that we should be at after our treatment without developing symptoms like low blood pressure, leg cramping, and that usually happens when you start to receive leg cramping, that's saying that too much fluid is being pulled off. That happened to me maybe once or twice and it is the worst feeling. Literally, your legs start cramping up, it hurts. At that point, I realized how important it is for me to monitor what's going on with my body. I don't leave it up to the nurses or the doctors. I let them know when to stop the machine, when they can continue. Yes, they have a treatment plan that your doctor sets up for you, but at the end of the day, you're the one in control and you know your body best. So to reiterate, it is not good once you start receiving cramping, dizziness, low blood pressure, nausea, and if you start to feel lethargic, those are signs that you're gaining too much fluids between your treatments. Or it may mean that your estimated dry weight is too low. And I definitely would reach out to your doctor and let him know exactly how you're feeling. So I experienced all of these, but the biggest one that I experienced the most was the shortness of breath. I always had fluids around my lungs. So I had to tell my doctor at one point, listen, I need you to adjust my dry weight. Once he adjusted the dry weight, those symptoms actually went away. Monitoring those numbers will make a tremendous difference in how you're feeling. It's vital that you learn how to take care of your access, not only on your dialysis days, but your non-dialysis days where you have no help from a nurse. Whether it's either your fistula, your catheter or even a graft because this is your lifeline. When I first used to use my fistula, I would have to check for the thrill. So a lot of people, if you're not familiar, the thrill is that pumping feel that you feel in your arm. I was terrified when I first got this and I used to touch my arm, it used to creep me out. Not only you see the bumps, but 
the thrill of it because you're not used to feeling that blood rush through your body and so when I used to have to touch it oh I used to be so creeped out like I never wanted to touch it I'll tell my husband hey come here touch this for me and tell me if it's actually has a thrill to it because I was so scared I know I'm a big baby but I was really scared in just how it felt it used to creep me out but it's very important that you know that the pulsation and the vibration is actually still there. Just so you know that it's working. Cause like I said, it is our lifeline. It's what keeps us alive. And without this, I can't get my dialysis. Hey guys, so today I'm actually getting a fitula put in. I hope I'm saying it right. So basically I'm gonna be removing the perm cast that was installed into my chest. And we're gonna be putting it into the arm. So when I go to dialysis, that's where they're going to be pulling from. It's from my arm instead of from the chest because the chest is a little bit dangerous. This is nothing that you want to keep in permanently, I was told. Another tip in regards to caring for your access is not to lift anything heavy. That is one of the biggest rules that they tell us because with this hand, you don't want to lift and cause any problems with your access. So I never used to lift groceries or anything heavy. If I did anything, it would be with my right hand. So for the first couple of weeks, actually, when I first got this done, I wasn't allowed to lift even a gallon of milk, guys. That's how much lifting. And mind you, I just had a baby a little bit ago. Wasn't even allowed to lift my son. I couldn't do any of that. So my husband had to, you know, give him baths, help him out because I couldn't physically lift. Also, sleeping. So I like to sleep on this side and I always used to sleep with my head on my arm and I was not allowed to sleep on the arm anymore and you don't want to crush that area. So basically I had to learn to sleep on the other side which was a pain in the butt but I did it. And sometimes I accidentally did fall asleep but in the middle of my sleep I would jump up and realize holy crap I'm sleeping on this. I had to you know twist back over so it took a little bit of adjusting but definitely do not sleep on your fistula don't want to get any infection so it's so important that you take care of this yes your nurses is there to take care of you on the days that you're actually in dialysis but be even between those non-dialysis days like a weekend an infection can actually build up and it can happen really quick so you just want to care for it you want to make sure that it is being treated properly that you do clean it the right way exactly how they tell you to do it just know it's your responsibility not the nurses but it's technically your responsibility to take care of your lifeline so there are times where your fistula will get clogged and like right now I think remember I kept telling you guys in previous video that it's been hurting me well I made an appointment with my vein specialist and I'm gonna go in there and I'm actually gonna have a procedure done where they're gonna open up the blockage so the you know the blood can flow through nicely um, but for me, since my treatment is over, I am also going to talk about maybe reversing this just because look at it guys, it's like really bumpy and I don't like it. And I know the bumps probably would never go away, but I figured as I put on more weight, it will kind of hide it a little bit better. But it's our responsibility to go and have someone look at this every so often. Even if it is working properly, I would still suggest making an appointment with the vein specialist and have him look at it. They do an ultrasound. They make sure it's pumping right, there's no clogs, and you're able to use it properly. I didn't want the clogging to develop into something worse. Right now is probably not the best time for me to go into a doctor's office, but it is really bothering me at this point. If I stretch out the arm or even curl it in, you can feel the pain. And so that is a sign of something going on. And instead of me sitting back and waiting and something worse to develop, I'm actually taking action now to have this fixed and repaired so I don't have any future issues. So the third thing that you can do to improve your dialysis session is avoid boredom, guys. Yes, we're sitting there four or five hours, however many hours your treatment is, but find things to do. So if you like to color, color. If you like to read a book, read a book. So most dialysis places that I've been to have television. So I would watch TV, but I was one of those that was always on the phone. Literally, my mom was amazing. She was there with me throughout each and every dialysis session. So once they plugged me into the machines and the machines started running, I would just pick up the phone and I would talk to her for most of my dialysis sessions. <laughs> And 
and I got a long cord so I can actually plug it in and charge it for the four hours that I was in dialysis. Also, you can make friends. There are people that are next to you, in front of you, that are going through the same thing. You don't have to take this on by yourself. I already know this is a lonely disease when you're at home because they don't understand. But there were people next to me that I met some amazing people in dialysis. Dialysis has no discrimination. Young, old, white, black, Chinese. It didn't matter. We had everybody from all walks of life. You could have money, you could be broke. It didn't matter. There were so many different people that I got to interact with. With. There wasn't too many young people like myself. There was a few, um, but not too many. And for the shift, I am not an early person. So I used to hate to have to get up for the early morning shift. So I used to go for like the 10.30, 10.40 around that time. It was right in time for me to pick up my son from school. So I also will do some work. Like I used to bring my computer. This is before I had the fistula. When I had just the catheter, I did everything. There was no problems. I felt no pain. So I would have my computer. I'll make my calls. I'll do whatever I need to do to knock out all my work before I get home. But once, I got this fistula put in, it was very hard for me to move because literally my hand had to sit on the chair like this for four hours straight. There was no bending, moving, because there's an actual needle that's inside of you and a big ass needle at that. So I never wanted to move this arm, but my hands used to be cold. So I used to put on little gloves or mittens and I just talk on the phone, relax, kick up, and I got to know my nurses. You know, and they were really cool. Not only were they caring, because this job is not easy by any means, but I used to hear about like maybe their side jobs they used to do, or you know, why they got into this, but I used to have conversations. And when you're good to your nurses, they are good to you. Trust me, you don't want to be nasty and mean. It's not their fault that you're on dialysis. So I used to bring them little treats, maybe some donuts, do something nice so we could enjoy that time. But lots of laughter. I had one dialysis nurse. He had the whole place lit. Literally, we used to have music. He was like a comedian on its own. So he always had jokes, he always had stories to tell. He would make you laugh. And he understood what I was going through because his wife also battled lupus and she had kidney disease. So he can relate to my situation. And the fact that I was young, more like one of his kids, he just, you know, really loved on me. He made sure I was okay because there was a time where I wanted to give up on dialysis. Once I went to the fistula, I was done. I cried every treatment. I gave up. I said, I'm going to end up dying. I can't do this. There's no way. And he used to talk me, him and another old lady that sat across. Every time I came in, she used to say, honey, it's gonna get better. Don't worry about it. Things will get better. I didn't know how things were gonna get better with that kind of pain. And every time I went in, the needle got a little bit bigger, a little bit bigger, a little bit bigger, and it was too much. So what I did to help me with that dialysis session is I bought a numbing cream. So lidocaine has a numbing cream, and I used to rub it all over, like 30 minutes before. And right before I come in, I'm like rubbing my arms because I wanted that area so numb where I didn't feel it. Yes, it numbed, it helped, but it didn't completely numb it out. But it did drastic, so I had to have a prescription for that. So we numbed the area and things got better. And I started to enjoy my dialysis. I enjoy it like hee hee, but I just used to enjoy it enough to get through that pain. So there's so many different things that you guys can do to start you know, making your dialysis sessions better. Understanding your dialysis, taking care of your access, doing things when you're doing your treatment. You know, if this is where you're going to have to be, you, you might as well make the best out of it. You know, sometimes we can't understand why God puts us in these situations, but I promise you, you can make it. Listen to your doctors, follow the instructions, and listen to that inner voice. It's your body, and that is the biggest thing I can tell you. Yes, the doctors are there to guide you, but they do not know how you feel, guys. So speak up, have a voice. Do not be timid. Don't sit back and think that, you know, this is the end of the world. I know how you feel. I truly do. So just know that better days will come. So if you're currently going through dialysis, please drop in the comments below and let us know some of the activities that you're doing. Do you enjoy reading? Do you talk on the phone? Or do you just sleep the whole dialysis session? Let us know some of the things that you're actually doing because it might be able to help somebody. 
I also want to say thank you to the 424 subscribers that I have. This channel is growing faster than I expected and I am so grateful each and every one of you. So today's shout out goes to Coach Via. She commented and said, this is a lot to deal with and you are very brave and strong. Thanks for sharing your story. You're such an inspiration. Well, Coach Bia, I wanna say thank you for taking the time to watch my video. You guys, please continue to share because we want to impact the masses and let people know that if you're dealing with a chronic illness, you're not alone. I'm here to help. So before I leave today, I'm gonna to leave you guys with a little quote. And today's quote is, the flower that blooms in adversity is the rarest and the most beautiful of them all. Always remember that you're beautiful in and out regardless of this chronic situation. All right guys, thank you guys for watching this video today. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button and I just wanna let you know that I love and appreciate you. All right guys, see you on the next video. I'm super hungry, like I need to go get something to eat right now, hungry. <gasps> so I woke up and I had 424 subscribers. How about that, y'all? How about that, y'all? Hey. Oh God, I have my blankie. Y'all know I'm always cold. So my videos are starting to pick up. I don't know what YouTube is doing, but I'm really happy. My scent video, my dialysis video, my kidney vlog video, you guys are just pumping up and I'm thankful for each and every one of you. Our video is doing good together. Huh? Let me check the views for you, baby. I always get lipstick on my teeth. I got some calls to make. I got some people to talk to. I need to work. I know my husband is like waiting for me to hurry up with these videos so I can come and work. But I'm gonna waste time and make some calls.